Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Back in episode 12, I did a series of deductive logical statements, which, because they're deductive and logical, must be accurate. I had a lot of fun doing it, too. So much so, in fact, that I decided to do it again. Except this time, the subject is going to be God's will, and whether we can claim to be teaching it. Way back in episode 4, we defined free will as a part of the mind, not entirely physical in nature. Because of this, it doesn't need matter in order to exist, so there's no reason, as far as I can tell, why God can't have a will. Supposing, therefore, that he does have a will, that will is proper to God, and therefore is a property of God. Question 1. Is God's will timeless? God's will is proper to God. God is timeless. All of God's properties are also timeless. Therefore, God's will is timeless. Question 2. Can God's will change? Things change as they pass through time. God's will is timeless. Therefore, God's will cannot change. Question 3. Must teachings remain constant in order to be in conformity with the will of God? God's will is constant. Therefore, all teachings conforming to God's will must also be constant. Now, there are many questions that can be asked about this, and many answers to them, but this answer seems intellectually honest. In order for a teaching to be accurate in depicting God's will, it needs to remain basically unchanged from one year to the next. Question 4. Can new dimensions, and even new teachings, be discovered contradicting the old ones, and still be in keeping with God's will? Being in keeping with God's will means failing to contradict it. If multiple teachings contradict each other, they are not in keeping with each other. God cannot produce falsehood. Therefore, God's will cannot contradict itself. Therefore, at least one of the teachings is not in keeping with God's will. Question 5. Can new dimensions and even new teachings be discovered compatible with the old ones and still be in keeping with God's will? The human ability to understand reality is limited. God is infinite. Therefore, dimensions to God's will exist which the human mind has not yet discovered. Therefore, no teaching passed on by humans can fully convey the entirety of God's will. Therefore, if a human teaching conveys God's will, it conveys not all of it, but a part of it. Therefore, if a human teaching conveys a part of God's will, it can also convey a larger part. Conclusion. Human teachings can discover new dimensions, or even new teachings which are in keeping with God's will, so long as they are compatible with the old ones. All of this is kind of a mouthful, though, so let me put it another way. There are two kinds of ways for me to change a teaching. I can change it, and I can develop it. For example, let's say we're in school, and I teach you that dandelions have yellow petals. That's a fairly elementary teaching, although it's true enough. Changing the teaching would be if I were to tell you, no, wait, they have red petals instead. I'm changing the teaching from what it was before, and when I do that, one of those teachings has to be wrong. Developing a teaching is different. It's when I tell you something new, but I don't contradict anything that was taught before. For example, I can develop my teaching about dandelions by saying that they're yellow because they have carotenoids in them. The same is true of God's will. New things can be discovered about it, provided that one doesn't seek to invalidate truths that are already established. Therefore, in order for a religion to teach God's will, it must have a core set of teachings about God's will which may develop, but may never change. Now, let's look at just one teaching as an example. In 1929, the Christian world was united on the issue of contraception, the use of artificial methods to prevent a person from conceiving a child after sex. The Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Churches, Anglicanism, and every Protestant religion all agreed that contraception was absolutely forbidden in all cases, because it denied the natural purpose of marriage and made a mockery of the sexual act for selfish reasons. In 1930, the Anglican Lambeth Conference changed their minds on this, and soon the Anglican Church had accepted that contraception was permissible under certain rare conditions. At this point, it became obvious that one of their teachings had been wrong. The Anglican Church, therefore, does not have unchanging teachings. Virtually all Protestant groups also gave in over time, as well as the Russian Orthodox Church and many others, though not all. On this particular issue, the vast majority of Christian groups have decided to change their teachings, ignoring the teachings that came before. When all is said and done, therefore, only one church remains, which has unchanging, though still developed, teachings, and which can therefore justifiably make the claim that it teaches the truth. The Roman Catholic Church. Of course, just because a claim can be justified doesn't mean we've proven it yet. All we've proven so far is that if the Roman Catholic Church isn't right about God, then no one is. But still, there is that one possibility remaining that God might not have let anyone teach his will, or just might not have cared enough. But that's for next time. 
That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.